Hey, everybody, we are live HQ for HR. You're back for episode number two. Uh, welcome for those who haven't been around. I'm Tim Sackett. I'm your host. I'm kind of like the Scott Rogowski of HR. I'm coming to you live from Lansing, Michigan, where our motto, as always, has been, hey, you can drink our water um, because we're not Flint. But you guys can laugh, like smile. Like I got a little smile at Amy. Like everybody else is looking at me like this. Um, I have He's not really I, saying that. <laughs> I have some introductions. First and foremost, want to thank Fistful Talent and Paycor, our sponsors for today. Um, make sure you check out Paycor and their HR Center of Excellence. So that's really awesome. A great tool. Everything is free. You can go in there. You can actually uh, do some quick quizzes in terms of finding out where you're at in terms of your level of expertise within certain uh, pillars of HR. So check them out, Paycor, Paycor's HR Center of Excellence. Also, I wanna thank Sherm. Um, Sherm actually helped us out with the question, so I didn't have to come up with all these on my own. So um, check, that, check out the Sherm certification. If you're not Sherm CP or SCP certified, um, make sure you do that. I'll ask the two other people that are on um, the, the, the phone that have, weren't last week. So Amy and Lance, are you guys Sherm certified? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Got my SCP. Well, no, and I, I'm, running. I'm running without it. I don't need it. I'm smart. I don't need this. I don't need your Sherm knowledge. Uh, I, I know you're a Shermy. Um, I don't know if you've like updated it recently, if ever, but I know at one time in your life. So you'll notice that we have last week's champion back, Chris Dunn out of Kinetics, CHRO, out of his home office in Birmingham, Alabama. Chris, welcome to the show. Tim, thanks for having me. It's great to be back. Um, it's gonna be tough to defend uh, with this group you've got in today. I'm uh, I'm not confident, but I'll do my best. You brought in some ringers, so I'll start with uh, with the with the lady that's joining the three dudes, Amy Dick. Amy's out of London Trust, Director of HR. Amy, introduce yourselves. Tell us what you do. Tell us something about you. Great. Um, so I uh, am based out of Colorado. I've been with London Trust Media since June of last year. I was their first HR hire, and they had a little bit, uh, or a little bit over a hundred employees and contractors at that time. So I've already hired someone else to help me uh, because <laughs> I was quickly overwhelmed. Um, and basically, LTM is a holding com holdings company, so we own a bunch of different companies underneath. Our biggest uh, uh, company is Private Internet Access. So for all of you looking for your own VPN services, go check out Private Internet Access. We don't log any of your data, so that's my plug there. Um, and <laughs> something about myself, uh, I am actually moving to Canada this year, which is a fun fact and very random. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to work that out with the company and also the team, and so. Awesome. Very exciting year ahead. What part of Canada? Uh, Winnipeg, actually. What's your address there? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, awesome. Oh, Enjoy Winnipeg. It's in the middle of <laughs> And you guys can all find uh, Amy online or Amy at LinkedIn, right? So like uh, Amy Dick on, uh, on LinkedIn, you can and, yep. invite, invite her, network with her. She needs some Canadian help. All our Canadian participants of HQ for HR, check her out. And then last but certainly not least, Lance Richards, the director of Avon Colorado, director of HR. Lance, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, I'm, uh, I'm the guy that doesn't know how to run Outlook just yet. I dialed in for this call yesterday. Um, I'm the head of HR and uh, risk management for the town of Avon, little municipality. If you've heard of places like Vail and Beaver Creek, uh, we're right there in between. And uh, so I'm, uh, I'm up here enjoying, the, uh, enjoying God's country. Yep. And when Lance decides to leave his position, I've already uh, put my name in for his replacement since he's how many steps away from the gondola? 304 steps carrying skis. 300 plus steps right there. I can grab my snowboard. I have a great two hour lunch break and I am on the slopes. All yes. right. Are you guys, you guys know how we play. We have 12 questions. You have 10 seconds to answer each question. Jen Hoffer, our woman behind the scenes is actually keeping score. So the first four questions are worth one point. The next four questions are worth two points and the last four are worth three points. And we are gonna go live right now. Um, with the first question, what is a group of crows called? A herd, a flock, a murderer? What is, it, what is a group of crows called? I can tell you what a group of cows are called since that's how I wrote the question and I got mm -hmm. uh, like lamed on that right away. Are all the ones in, Katie? Are you doing numbers? You got them? All right, we're in, we'll end the poll. 
It is a murder, a murder of crows. Um, and I was saying, like, if you've ever go to um, uh, New Zealand, there's a great place called Murder Burger, which I think is poetic for, for what we do. So, is that a crow uh, burger? 33% uh, of the people thought it was a flock. Um, that's a flock of seagulls, not a flock of crows. <laughs> Here we go. Next question, round two, um, or question number two. Which of the following would be least likely to be considered a job competency? Communication skills, teamwork skills, reading skills. A um, competency. Which of the following would be least likely considered a job competency? For those of you who are at home playing along without a job, you've already struggled with this one. And we have all the threes in. And so let's go and see what people said. It is reading skills. Like you guys are studs that you knew those. Actually, you're not because the first two questions are really easy. Um, the kindergarten class before this got them all right as well. So good for you. Um, you got that. So reading skills definitely um, are up there. Teamwork skills, 17%. One person said, hey, communication skills is a job competency that you're most likely to have. All right, we move along. Question number three. And so here we go. Which of the following forms of discrimination? Uh-oh, now we're getting technical. Which of the following forms of discrimination is not covered by Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, not to be confused with the Civil Rights Act of 1991? Is it age, race? or national origin, what is your vote for a professional panelist? Number one, number two, number three. And Eight. here we go, we put that there, we share the results, what do we got? Age, actually, 63%, a lot of it, one third thought it was national origin. Unfortunately, no. Title uh, seven actually protects uh, that discrimination um, of national origin. So. So now we're at question number four, uh -oh. and we rate, um, we don't raise up yet, right? We go still, nope, we're still, uh, still at the, uh, still at the, the one point. Um, did I share results on that one? Did you guys see that one? Sorry. Yeah, we did. Hey, Tim, do you want, do you want us on video, do you want to prompt us to give you the answer to make it harder on the people following along online? Yeah, we should, right? There's copy news, what you're thinking? Well, right now, I, hate to, I hate to accuse anybody of anything, Tim, but, you know, we all are three for three. Well, but, uh, well, no, Amy had that one wrong, right? I'm uh, sorry, Amy. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go right to question four. I think most of you will get this one, uh, or maybe not. We'll see how it goes. So what's the most productive day of the work week is which day? Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday? Uh-oh, now we're getting hard. Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday? Now, this was uh, done by a formal poll of people that don't show up to work on Mondays. So <laughs> let's figure out which one that is. Okay, you guys show me your answer. One, two, or three. And the answer is Tuesday. 75% really? of the participants were right on board. Monday for those uh, 13, I wouldn't say Monday would be a big one. Hump day is also had a 13%. So we will stop here and we're gonna go right on to number four or number five, question number five. And here's that question. Which of the following is not one of the main elements of a job description? Scope information, compensation rates, physical work conditions, and physical demands. Which of the following is not one of the main elements of the job description? Live teams, put them up, what you got? Number two, number two, and Amy is gonna right. go number two. She was struggling with that one. I think she wanted to say scope, didn't you? I didn't understand what that meant. Is that like job description? <laughs> Uh, yes, the main, the main elements of a job description. That's why you're not SHRM certified, Amy, because wow. you, you didn't get that one. But it's okay because uh, you got them right, 86%. That was not a hard one. I guess I thought it was more difficult than that. Hey, um, hey, Tim. hey, if you follow the Google for Jobs thing, that may change in a couple of years, right? For sure, right? Google for Jobs says, hey, candidates want to know what the compensation is. And they, want, they don't want to arrange. They want specific information. Um, so that's a good take, Katie. What do you think? Should, should it be there? 
Yeah, well, it's a hot take from me, but I think it will be in two years. Cause they, I think Google, Google for Jobs, five years for sure. Google for Jobs is going to change how we view that. I, I, I can't not, not agree with you. So yes. how's that double negative? All right. You guys ready? We're going we're gonna to raise up the stakes um, with, with a level of difficulty on these questions. So question number six comes in. Which piece of legislation declared that back pay awards cannot be part of compensatory compensatory damage. That's easy for me to say. The Civil Rights Act of 1921, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Equal Opportunity Act of 1974. This one is going to be a differentiator. I think we're going to blow away kind of what people are thinking. We'll see what everybody gets. Come on, here we go. Three, to look at what's Googling. You can't Google. I'm going to end it right now. You can't Google. <laughs> it is actually the Civil Rights Act of 1991. Ah, oh, one I was right. Winner. Yeah, Lance, you got it right. KD and Amy, you guys are backing up um, in terms of the point score. Um, so, so Lance right now, I think, has got the lead, KD. Um, and Amy, you gotta, you're going to pick it up. But we got some big point questions coming. Um, I feel confident that you'll be back in this. Question number seven. Um, so here we go. This one, uh, which, is the, which of the following would not be considered monetary compensation? Stock options, paid leave, flex time. Which would non- not be considered monetary compensation? Dun, dun, dun. And by monetary compensation, we mean things that you get paid. Oh, did I just give that away? Not really. Katie, Things you ready? I think that one, that one was another easier one. I think everybody, 94%. Stock options, I'm getting paid. Paid leave, I'm actually getting paid. Flex time, that's not getting paid. Do people even give flex time anymore? Lance, do you get flex time? You put all those hours in, you get to ski, you get flex time? Absolutely, yes. Two-hour lunches are flex time. Absolutely. So if anybody wants flex time, go to work for Lance. Call him up. Avon, Colorado. Two hours of gravity research. It's always good. Question number eight, last of the two point questions. And here we're gonna go with this one. And this one actually has to do a little bit with safety and risk. We'll launch the poll, which of the following is an example of chemical health hazard. An example of a chemical health hazard. Is it a pesticide, is it a bacterium, is it a virus? Which is a chemical health hazard? Little known fact, Katie, in HR, we're responsible for health and safety. Do you know that? Uh, that's news to me, Tim. Thanks you for you remember that uh, with your SCP yeah. question. It's in the body. It's in the body of knowledge. In the body the of knowledge. knowledge, and that one was a really simple one. Everybody got that one. I thought I might trip some people up, and they would say bacterium. Um, I, apparently not. So you guys got that one fairly easy. One hundred percent of those playing along at home. All right, we're gonna jump forward to three point questions. The first three-point question in this one is, what's the world's most popular first name? Amelia, Mohammed, or James? What is the world's most popular first name? Katie, Lance, go ahead, give it to me. You guys got it, across the board, Mohammed, 21. I will tell you, James also is a very popular name. And from the women uh, standpoint, Amelia was actually the number one name in 2017. Amy, does that seem weird? Amelia? It does seem a little weird. Right? In what, in what country though? Uh, this is worldwide. Amelia? So, worldwide stats. Mohammed was number one um, from that. So for those who don't know right there, uh, no one picked Amelia. Like there was just a real bias towards female. Um, <laughs> popular first name right there. But I won't call out the HR professionals on this on this segment. Going forward, question number ten. We're almost done. Three more to go. Which of the following institutions did not receive Title VII coverage pursuant to the Equal Opportunity Act of 1972? The following institutions that did not receive it: universities, federal legislative bodies, or religious institutions. Which of the following institutions did not receive Title VII coverage pursuant to Equal Opportunity Act of 1972? So what were those companies that could go out and just do whatever they wanted? That's what we're talking about. Everyone's in with their answers. We're going to end the poll, show the results. Religious institutions, for sure. 
you're a religious institution, you can go out and hire just about anybody you want. No one's going to pay attention to you. Um, you also don't have to pay taxes, right, Katie? That's right, Tim. That's why you have the Church of Sacadamas, Sac I believe. The Church of Sacadamas is putting three kids through college, um, and so I don't have to pay taxes. That's how we do it for the capitalist in the crowd. All right, question number 11, and we are running behind, so stay with us, folks. I told you we got here in 15. We're a little bit longer than that. We're going to launch the next question. When employees leave work early or purposely work at a slow pace, they are engaging in what? Personal aggression, production deviance, or property deviance? When an employee leaves work early or purposely, they slow that pace. Go ahead, put them up, put them up, put them up. Everybody number two. And it looks like everybody kind of, personally, I guess you could, you could actually argue that they were showing some personal aggression, but from a technical HR perspective, uh, you know, function, it's production deviance is what they're, the, what they're actually doing, 86%. Got three points on that one. Um, man, I have to up my game in terms of level of difficulty on questions. I think I have it for this last one. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. This one's kind of situational. So uh, stick with us. Last one. A new employee is told by her coworkers that one of her duties is to handle customer queries as they arrive. However, her manager informs her that they'll be handled by her department as a whole and to defer her coworkers until becoming more acclimated. This is also what? A role conflict? Role ambiguity or role orientation. Ooh, the big, this is a separator, I can tell already. This one is gonna separate. A new employee is told by her coworkers that one of her duties is to handle customer queries as they arrive. However, her manager informs her they are to be handled by her department as a whole and defer to her coworkers until she actually knows what the hell she is doing. We're gonna end the poll, everybody has it in. We have, we have a differentiator here, three, two, one. Here's the role, right? Role conflict is what we're talking about. Not role ambiguity or role orientation. Only 20% got mm. the three points on that one. Hey. Wow. That wow. one, that's the first question we had where, we have, where everybody had a different one. So we're gonna bring Jen Hoffer in as she tabulates the, re the winner and by points. And so Jen, what do, what do we got? All right. Well, it was really, really close this week. We were about one point uh, in each round across. And uh, going into the last question, Amy was at 18, Lance was at 20, and Chris was at 19. But because Amy won the last question, she is at 21 and wins. <laughs> wow! Winner! Winner oh, right that's at the that end. Is unbelievable. Wow. Nicely Amy. done, Amy. Way to uh, lay low until it really mattered. The HQ for HR Paycor winner is Amy Dick out of Denver, Colorado. And Paycor will be sending you a great prize package. Um, and so we'll be reaching out to you for that. Lance, thank you so much. If you want to log in again tomorrow, um, we won't be there, but you know, you, can, you know the link works. <laughs> Katie, thanks for coming in last minute to fill in. For Michelle, who had an HR emergency, that's what we do, that happens. We will see all you guys later. Thank you so much for playing HQ for HR. See you next Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern. Same place, same crazy people. See you then.